Hello and welcome to another session on Java programming. In this session, we'll be taking a look at an array of strings. We'll see how to declare and use single dimensional and multi dimensional arrays with strings. We'll take a lot of exercises to understand this concept. Let's straight away go to the demonstrations now. So this demonstration is all about an array of strings. We're going to have single dimensional and multi dimensional array of strings. We'll see how to declare them, how to uh, populate the array with data and how to read the data from the array. We'll take a look at a lot of examples in this session. So first, let us uh, see how to initialize a single dimensional array of strings. So let me have an array here that is uh, called as names. And I'll directly initialize the names here. So we're going to have everything as a string, Satish, Ram, Matthew. So this is a single dimensional array of strings. And uh, what is that we are going to do here is we are going to uh, print the data from within the array using an enhanced for loop. So I'll take every string, I'll call them a sample from the array of uh, names here. And let me uh, print uh, the sample out. So we are taking every st string from this array. So first Satish will be taken, moved to sample and Satish will be printed. Next, Ram will be taken from the names array, moved to sample and uh, Ram will be printed. So let's uh, run this. So you're able to see the output here. So we have declared an array of strings. We're able to read the data from the array and print the data to the user. Now, what if uh, we want the user to enter the data? Let's not initialize it like this. We want the user to enter the data. Let's have an array declaration here, new string. So we're going to have three names. And uh, how to get the names from the user? For this, we need uh, to read the data from the console. So I'll have a scanner object here, opj, system.in. And uh, we have to run a for loop for the entire length of the array. So we'll say for int i is equal to 0, we can find the length of the array by using the array name, names.length dot length so that gives the length of the array here length of the array is 3 the index runs from 0 to 2 so it's i less than names dot length and i plus plus so for every index we are going to ask the user to enter the name enter the name and uh, we can get the name using the array indexes so it's names of i is equal to obj dot next line uh, dot uh, next uh, line so we are reading in every name and then we are moving it to the array. So names of zero, names of one, names of two. So we'll have three names and uh, we'll also display the names as usual using an enhanced for loop. Let's run this. Let's check. Uh, let's take a look at the output. So it's going to ask us to enter the name. Let me enter Satish again, Ram and then Matthew. So you are able to see here Satish, Ram and Matthew. We are able to find the data from within the array and display it. Say, so what if uh, the user wants to search for a name from within the array? So we'll ask the user to enter the search name. So we'll have this out. We'll say, enter the search name. So he's going to enter some search name. I'll call that string search is equal to obj dot next line. So we are getting the string for searching from the user. And how will you search? So we are uh, through the enhanced for loop, we are getting every name. And uh, we are here we are performing a string comparison. So we can perform if sample dot equals our search string. Then what we can do, we can say sys out name found in the array. And then we can also have a Boolean to say that uh, name is found. So we can say uh, boolean found to be initially false so this is a flag we are setting so if we have found uh, we can say found equals true and uh, we can break so once when we find we are breaking from the array we are coming out and uh, what we'll do is uh, we'll check if found was always uh, false if not found what we can say is sys out uh, no such name no such name in the array 
that's it if you are finding the name we are breaking from that point from the array we are setting the boolean flag to true if found was uh, never set to true we say no such name in the array let's uh, run this code let's take a look at the output so enter the names uh, satish uh, ram matthew enter the search name i can enter the search name as satish i'll enter my name name found in the array let's uh, run it for the negative inputs to say let's enter for satish ram matthew and uh, search name let it be priya okay p r i a y something like that so it's a name no such name in the array so that's what uh, is the output because we don't have this particular name entered in the array so we can uh, really work with a multi dimensional array of strings too but i hope you you have understood how to use an array of strings here and search an array now let us take a look at uh, creating multi dimensional array of strings creating multi dimensional array of strings first we will see how to initialize a multi dimensional array of strings and then we'll see how to get the input from the user and finally how to search a multi dimensional array of strings so let's uh, let me delete all this code now what is this multi dimensional array of strings for instance i can have data like this inside an multi dimensional array say velour and then zip code is 632006 for velour district we have one of the zip codes to be 632006 and uh, we have um, say chennai we'll take that we'll have a zip code 600025 so you can have this to be a string this to be a string so zip code district name so this itself uh, forms a multi dimensional array of strings so this is how a multi dimensional array of strings uh, will look like let's see how to create this multi dimensional array and store this value inside the array let's initialize this value directly inside the array so we'll create this string multi dimensional array of strings we'll call this data to be some postal data let's say let me directly initialize this say for every uh, row say velour and uh, what will be the next content in the first row is the zip code 632006 likewise for the second row we'll have that to be chennai and uh, the zip code is 600025 so this is uh, what is initialized as part of this multi dimensional array now what we'll do is we'll print the data to the user using an enhance for loop so for so we're going to retrieve every row every row is a single dimensional array right so we'll retrieve every row so we'll retrieve that as an array string say i'll call this row from postal and and from every row we'll retrieve every item so what we'll say here is for every item that's a string from every row we'll print we'll print the item and then we'll also concatenate that with a space we'll print the row we'll come out we'll go to the next line and print the next row so so we have initialized a multi dimensional array of strings each row containing the district and the zip code next what we are doing is we are taking in every row so postal from postal array we are taking in every row first row will be velour and 632006 from every row we are taking in every item so we take velour first display velour next comes 632006 which will be displayed so one row is complete next it takes the second row so second row will be chennai 60025 so from this row we are first taking chennai printing chennai out and then we are taking this zip code and then we are printing the zip code out so let's run this let's see the output so you see here we are able to handle the multi dimensional array of strings now the next question is what if the user wants to enter the data instead of initializing like this 
let's let the user enter the data uh, for this we'll declare an array like this new string array we'll have two rows and two columns and of course when we are reading data from the console we'll have a scanner object uh, scanner obj system dot in so that's how you get the scanner object created and uh, now we'll use for loops for getting in data for every row and every column so for int i is equal to 0 i less than this is like uh, you read a multi-dimensional array of integers right the same way it's postal dot length gives the number of rows for the array i plus plus and for each row we have to read in the data item so it, it is for int j is equal to 0 and j less than so number of columns you can uh, find it by postal of i dot length so for every row number of items that should be read in that is postal of i dot length and j plus plus now how will you read in the data you have to ask the user to say enter the uh, district and zip code so you will enter the district and zip code simultaneously one after the other okay so we'll have this obj now it's postal postal of ij first entry will be the uh, district name so it's obj dot next line so first is going to enter the district next you'll be entering the zip code likewise you'll be entering for both the rows so this is how you get the input for the district and the zip code as usual you'll print the data using the enhance for loop let's run this code and check so first he enters the district next the zip code next he enters the district name and then the zip code 600025 so here is the output value 632006 chennai 600025 so what is that we have understood here is we can declare a multi-dimensional array of strings we can ask the user to enter the data so he's going to enter the data for the district and the zip code you can also very well put this message outside the loop so that it's getting displayed only once and uh, you're getting the district and the zip code displayed to the user using an enhanced for loop i hope and i believe that you are now comfortable in handling a multi-dimensional array of strings the next thing is what if uh, we want to search for a district say velour and then i want to get the uh, zip code for the district so it's going to be the user uh, is going to enter the district name for searching and then you have to give the uh, zip code for that uh, district so so we'll ask the user to enter the district so he's going to enter it here enter the district name and uh, we will get that in string search that is obj dot next line so we're getting the uh, name for searching the district name for searching from the user and now we should check whether we are reaching that district name so we'll use this enhance for loop we are getting every row and every item so when we get an item what we can do is we can have a check here if item dot equals whether this item say whether that uh, item that we are retrieving equals the uh, search item entered by the user say he enters velour so you're going to get this item velour so there is going to be a match but what is our objective we have to print the uh, uh, what is that zip code zip code occurs next in the next location to velour so we have found the match for velour so what we will do here is we will set this boolean flag to be true we'll have a boolean flag so it is uh, boolean found initially it is false what we'll do is we'll set this flag found is equal to true and then we'll continue because we should go to the next uh, item in the array so here when the next item comes what we'll do is if found if found is set to true we will just print sys out the item so this is the zip code so that's what we are printing here so when we match a district i'm setting the boolean flag to be true forcing it to the next iteration and here 
found if found is set to true we are displaying the item and then just when we display the zip code we can break see again you are in a nested for loop here so when you break the internal for loop the outer the outer for loop is not broken so we'll again check if found is set to true we can say sys out uh, it's not sys out i'm sorry it's uh, break so we'll also break from the outer loop let's uh, break here and uh, there's one more thing we can do if found was never set to true we can if not found what we can say is we can say no such district in the array let's check if this works i hope uh, this should work uh, let's uh, go with our inputs here velour zip code is 632006 and uh, Chennai zip code is 600025. Enter the district name. Let's enter Velour 632006. Yeah, it's working fine. But uh, we should also check for the negative test case. That is, what if I enter some district uh, that's not present in the array? So enter the district. Again, we are executing this Velour and uh, 632006 and Chennai. 600025 uh, district name let's uh, enter some district name here i will say xyz which is not present inside the array no such district in the array so we have run this for our uh, negative test cases and uh, also for our positive test cases yeah this code works fine <laughs> i don't see any issues as of now so you can uh, very well visit codespindle.com. You'll be able to get the code for all those exercises we are seeing here at Codespindle along with the video lectures. You can very well execute this if you have any issues or if you face any problems or you want to make some corrections to the code, you can very well let me know through the comment section. So with that, uh, we are coming to an end of this session. I hope you had a good time understanding an array of strings. Array of strings is a scary topic i always uh, had some fear whenever i looked at an array of strings but then it's uh, very simple i hope uh, by now you should be able to handle an array of strings without any issues so with that we are coming to an end of this session we'll catch up uh, in the next session with another new concept thank you all for listening take care